Paris. Ah, his temper. You're so stupid. Look at you. Cannot think by your own. I guess he can't drink. I never understood why he did that. We have to let the scars heal. God, have you ever been abused? Do you understand the pain that a woman who's been abused goes through? Do you? Welcome to Manhattan Neighborhood Network, el barrio Firehouse Community Media Center. Bienvenidos a Manhattan Neighborhood Network, el barrio Firehouse Community Media Center. I am Senaida Mendez, and I have the privilege of being the director of this beautiful facility. <laughs> it is a great pleasure to have all of you here in a very, very special evening. You're going to see something tonight that you haven't seen anywhere because it's coming from the heart. Everything that we do here, we try to do it where we give the space to women and men who really do documentary and film that touch all of us. And that's why we're here today. The main thing that we do at MNN, as some of you might, do, might know, is that we teach how to do your own television production film, podcasting. Once you are certified by us, you can use everything free. All right? So you can use this beautiful studio. We have two other students on the second floor. We have a conference room. That one by reservation only. <laughs> we have five television channels dedicated to the community. Each television channel has their own thing. So if you do a program that has to do with culture, you, we put in the culture channel. If you have to do with politics in the community channel, if it's like style, so it all depends what your show is about, then it's going to the channel. We are global now, because you can see our programs anywhere in the world. We teach virtually. <laughs> Thank you. In addition to all the independent producers that we have in our facilitated production, people submit show from uh, we broadcast in 22 languages. So you can do your show in Russian, <laughs> in Italian, whatever language you want to do it. And we also make sure that, uh, like I said, we get programs from China, from Germany. You can submit your program from anywhere in the world. Now, to use the studio, you have to be certified by us. And you have to come to our. Uh, what we call a facilitated production or orientation. So you come to the orientation and we will work with you. And we try to, uh, well, we have a lot of testimony here. A lot of the people that are here use our studio for many things. I mean, Dom Diaz, we are love, is here. She has a beautiful program about domestic violence that she has for years. And she's a former police officer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we we uh, at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. We have we have a new studio in 38th Street, in 10th Avenue, in the Hudson Yard. Uh, but like you can see, we are more popular here. Yeah. <laughs> but the new studio is beautiful. We have a new screening room that is fantastic. Everything is up to par. You know, we have nothing to envy the mainstream media. Uh, like I said, we have the, f the film club, we have the small gallery that we're so all the artists can show their uh, arts. When we do that, we open with a recession like tonight, and then we bring the artist for an interview here with Ronnie Bigini, who does the art seller of New York. Eh, le voy a decir en español porque hay dos o tres gente que no habla inglés. <ríe> Aquí estamos esta noche dándole la bienvenida a una mujer que se ha atrevido a hacer un documental histórico. Lo que nosotros hacemos aquí es darle la oportunidad a personas que hacen películas y documentales que salen del corazón y que a nosotros no llegan. Eso es lo principal, darle ese espacio que tal vez nadie más se lo va a dar. Para nosotros eso es muy importante. Lo principal que hacemos es dar clases. Ustedes aquí pueden aprender a editar, a usar las cámaras. Eh, damos muchas clases de podcasting, documental, de documentales. Una vez que usted ya sabe cómo funcionamos, 
pueden usar nuestras facilidades gratis. Eh, a veces a la gente que tiene mucho dinero le cobramos. <risa> Pero esto es comunitario. Es para nosotros ayudarnos unas a las otras, unos a los otros, porque para nosotros es muy importante darle la oportunidad, especialmente a nuestros jóvenes. Hoy me preguntaba una joven de qué edad, le digo, desde los 14 a los 125. Si usted pasa de los 125, eso es su problema. <risa> Pero en el verano tenemos un centro que, donde nos enfocamos las clases de verano para los jóvenes de 20 a 25 años, de 20 a 25 jóvenes, que le interesen los medios de comunicación. Todo pasa por una entrevista, porque esto no es un lugar para que la gente venga a janguear, como dicen. Esto es un lugar que usted, si usted no tiene nada que hacer, aquí usted no va. Tiene que venir a hacer algo. Puede venir a editar, puede venir a trabajar con uno de nuestros productores, a una, a una reunión, pero tratamos por seguridad de que todo el que entre aquí, nosotros tener por adelantado sus nombres y casi siempre se le pide un ID, entonces al menos que sea que ya una persona, tú sabes, como Yudelka, que la conocemos de un día, que sabemos que ya esa persona es tan vedada, como decimos. Así que yo le doy las bienvenidas a todos ustedes y les quiero dejar ahora con esta gran mujer, esta gran artista, directora, actriz, bueno, you name it, guionista de todo, Yudelka Hedgers. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, it feels great um, to screen Honey with a real audience because you guys are the first audience that we have, like that we have seen, like in New York uh, with Honey. We did it upstate New York and it's great. Thank you so much because we know that it's, it comes from the heart and uh, we receive that love. So thank you so much, um, receive Honey and uh, we'll talk later. Thank you so much, Senaida, for having us here, and um, MNN, um, Carla, Freddy, thank you so much, and uh, enjoy the show, or watch, or just absorb, I must say. Um, with you, Honey Cycle. Welcome to Honey Cycle. I'm your counselor. My name is Raina. I see new faces today. Welcome. We're glad you can be here with us. It takes courage to make such a bold decision. This is a safe and judgment-free environment. Every testimony is confidential. Be patient and gentle with yourselves. We're confident it is possible to live a violence-free life. Now, if you could look at the sheets of paper that were placed on top of your chairs and take a moment to fill them in. If you put those sheets of paper in the envelopes, we'll use them at the end. Thank you to Yudelka and all of you. You have to be brave to do what you just did. And this is the story of so many women and men, even though we don't hear a lot of the men, but we have so many stories. And <clears throat> what is more incredible is that it happened in the United States. People think you are in the United States, you are safe, you know, you have more freedom, you have more liberty. Every day, every minute, a woman is killed in the United States. Every minute, a woman is killed here by her partner. And we don't have enough resources, we don't have enough uh, support. So, what can we do? You know, and I, I don't even want to touch Latin America. <clears throat> we know that Mexico, every 30 seconds a woman is killed. Every 30 seconds by the partner. So we, uh, <clears throat> feature like this, we have to take it everywhere, everywhere. 
and we have to be ready to help, and we have to be ready to demand, to demand. We don't have enough resources. When we have a hotline for do domestic violence prevention, there are not enough resources there for us. When we are the majority, we have so many children with trauma from the time they are in our womb, they with trauma. Women will get hurt when they are going to have their babies. So we have not only to, we need to talk about it, but we need to demand for our representative, more resources, for more prevention. We need to be able <coughs> to be able to say no. Unfortunately, our culture, which is a machismo culture, we grew up in an environment where the man is in charge. <coughs> so, and then when you come here, you know, it's like, I remember when my mom and my dad came here, you know, my father said, oh, you're in New York, now you think you're on your own. Yes, because she dared to confront him. Why? Because in our country, we don't have that freedom. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Let me tell you, I went to Cuba, I've been in Cuba many, many times. So when you get married, you have to stay in your parents' home because there are not enough houses for you to move <laughs> with your partner. With your so it's everybody suffering. <clears throat> and that happened in many, many other countries. During the pandemic, you have to live with the person who is killing you every day. Because where are you gonna go? We were all in cluster. Therefore, you have to, you have to be there. You know, we just have a case in Dominican Republic where a judge, a women judge said, oh, I know the grandfather who impregnated the granddaughter and they're all happy. This is what we, we need to talk about it. <clears throat> we need to talk about it. We need to also help our sisters, you know, in our countries. You know, we, we need to do something. And I tell people, we in the diaspora have more power than we use. We have more influence than we think we do. Because if you are in a small country, there is nowhere to run. So we have to speak for the one there and the one here, no matter where you're from. No matter where you're from, we, hit, we have to be brave and speak up. And when we see those presidents of those countries that come to the United Nations, March, you know, they have, we have the forum right now, the Women Forum. We need to speak up about that, especially women of color. I, as an Afro-Latina, I'm doing this because I know what my Afro-Latina sister go through every single day. Every single day. And we're not gonna talk about African-American. It's the same thing. We are still in slavery. And, the, and I, I said to people, you need, we need to get more education because the, the road to freedom is education. If we don't get educated, when I say when you don't have a career, it can be cleaning house, if you're the best cleaner, if you have an income, you can liberate yourself. You don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer, but you need to be able to maintain yourself and support yourself and be brave. And we can stay quiet. When we know that there is a, a woman that is suffering, we need to speak up. We need to be there for that person. We need to be there for that person. So, uh, and Don Diaz has been doing this for years. We've been like, collaborating with her for many, many years. We also, there is something that's very important. <coughs> We have women that are in jail because they kill their partner in self-defense. They kill their partner in self-defense and they are in jail. We need to do something about those women. We need to do that. You know, they left their kids, one and two year old. I just met a woman, she was 15 years in jail. You know, the, the governor's wife pardoned her. 
after 15 years. It was in self-defense. She had all the proof, all the proof. She called the police every week, you know, 20 years in jail for self-defense. The trauma of the children, we have to think about that, the trauma of the children. We are an adult, we can take it, but the kids are, they seeing that, they, they watching what, what's going on. So we have to really unite and do something about this. We have to do something, we have to demand. What I tell people, when people are running for office and they come here to talk, and they don't have prevention of domestic violence, you know, affordable child care in their agenda, don't vote for that person because they don't have the best interest for us in their platform. So why would you vote for someone who do not care what's going on in our, in our household, in our community? Yes, because, oh, he's Dominican, I want to vote for him. He's Puerto Rican, I want to vote for him or her. But when you ask, what are you going to do about domestic violence, they don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. So that's the question you have to ask when somebody comes into your community, both for me. Oh, yeah, I'm going to vote for you. What is it that you're doing for us? What is it that you're doing about affordable housing? What is it that you do about child care? We have to demand our votes is valuable. We pay taxes. And when people tell me I don't like politics, everything is politics. Everything is politics. So you have to be ready not to march. In this kind of film, we have to show it every single high school, every single college, everywhere. We have to show film like this. I had three daughters and one granddaughter. So what I do, it's because I have a generation behind me and my shoulder. And now everyone have a mother like me, ha <laughs> ha, who is strong and is speak up. You know, most women are submissive, especially Latina, you know, and then see, they feel that the man is the one bringing the bread. They have to put up with all kinds of stuff. So we have to wake up. We have to wake up and we have to speak up. And when you see a woman in danger, you have to do something because the, it's not that she doesn't want to lead the relation, she doesn't know how. She doesn't know the way out. So we have to be really clear about that. But the politics is involved in all the situations that we have in our community. So when someone can to ask you for your vote, make sure that you ask, what is your platform? And when they don't have those issues on the platform, they say, well, you not, cannot come with my boat, you know. In my building where I live, there are 400 apartments. I guarantee a thousand boats. And I make sure that everybody knows who to vote for. I go door by door, let them know who they should vote and who they should not vote. So we all should do that. <laughs> we have the power. Thank you. So you abandon us, <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much again uh, for taking off your time and being here um, and having this conversation with us. Um, I wrote Honey with having this moment, um, like I picture and I dream of this moment uh, to happen for me to be able to talk about the topic of domestic abuse. Um, a little insight. Um, originally, I wrote 20 characters. I was too much. Um, then later on, that's from the point of view of the writer. Then later on, it became too much. I wanted to have like a big gather, and then through different drafts, um, I then later on ended up in having this conversation of 10, 10 women. Um, the process into choosing these actresses, um, it was on purpose. I thought about, from the point of view, I thought about talking globally. It is not only um, happening in Latin America, it happens all around the world. So I thought about that, and I wanted to have women representing those demographics. And um, for some time, I wanted to work with Barbie here, 
um, she studied and um, where I studied too, but we, we graduated in different years. Also Barbie, um, Barbara Bernardi here, and Mirla, is, is this, she's coming from another um, uh, theater company in Miami. But also I knew her work. And um, I always dream of working with Barbie Lee because I have seen her um, doing magic in what she does and Barbie and Mirla. And I have to say that it was a great company. It was, you know how they say that a bunch of women, oh, get ready, there's gonna be a trouble. Not in this cast. We had a process that we understood what we're talking about. Um, we rehearse. So whenever each actress was performing one of their parts, they knew where they're coming from. So we did that together, and um, and I do appreciate that because that's one of the best casts that I ever had. And I don't know, you know, in the other projects, if we're gonna, if I'm gonna have another like such a, an amazing, um, talented, and you know, and um, and just one of those artists that want to jump on a boat and I'll do whatever. So I had in the past people asking me about. Would you, what would you do different with this film? Would you choose to have a crane? Would you do other shots? And I, my response is always no. I wanted to have a conversation. I wanted the audience to sit down and take in every single aspect of this character. So I'm really pleased with that. And you know, um, here we are. And I would love to hear a little about my actress. Was it, what, how was the process for them? And enough talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, um, well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for watching Honey Cycle with us. It's such a labor of love for everybody here. Um, as far as, um, you know, kind of the whole process is just, we all felt just a great need to tell the story and to tell it authentically and genuinely. I think we were just very concerned with making sure that, um, you know, maybe some of us didn't uh, necessarily uh, are, are not necessarily survivors of domestic violence, but that we wanted to portray and we wanted to just give and delve so deep into it so that um, for somebody who is a survivor or for somebody who has a sister or, you know what I'm saying, a family member or, or a brother or such, to, to feel it and to be informed and to have a greater sense of empathy um, for the characters and, and for their family or anybody else going through that that situation. And so um, I think we all probably, you know, did a lot of research, I'd imagine, you know, and um, and then, you know, we put our best foot forward. We, we put in our acting chops, <laughs> our yeah. acting techniques. We listened to each other. We watched each other. We watched each and every single one of the performances of the ladies. And um, I mean, I teared up watching all of the ladies there and so it that informs you it, it it feeds you and then you're you're able to give there was a lot of giving and there was a lot of receiving and you know and listening um so it was it was a labor of love i would say um from the start you know yeah. um i always felt very comfortable uh going into the project in the sense that i felt like it was a safe space to be as raw as possible and to dive in deep and be really honest for, like you both said, to be able to educate and be able to make people be very well informed about that it's different situations for everyone. It's not always the same pattern of domestic abuse. There's like different situations and I thought that was something really beautiful that you did, that you had someone who was being abused by a girlfriend and someone, it wasn't always just the husband. So I, I always thought that going into it, it was gonna be hard, but I was also very first honored for being casted and second, I was scared, but I felt comfortable. And it's weird to say that you feel comfortable doing this type of work because it's 
it's very, very hard and a sad situation, but it was such a safe space and I felt so respected doing everything that I needed to do. And I also felt so connected to everyone. Like you said, we were like basically in therapy for like a full day. <laughs> We were just sitting there and listening to each other. And even though we listened to each other over and over, every time it felt new. And it felt different. And I never felt uncomfortable. And I think that was so important. That is nice to hear because um, part of my directing into the psychology of each character was th there was never the intention of playing sad because these characters were sad already, like their situation. Um, but it was all about exploring and being truthful. And I think that we, we really were, we were successful into finding the truth. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, and that was the first time, you know, we've shared these experiences with anybody out loud. So imagine, you know, going into something for the first time, you're not really sure. Um, you know, statistically, it takes a woman or, or a person like seven times before they can, you know, get help for these things. And so for each of the ladies, like imagine coming in, you know, into this circumstance and having to share, you know, we share, but that this is way deeper than that. And so even that was like, you know, informed and um, we tried we tried our best to really um, with each take, like, you know, this is the first time we're hearing this. This is the first time I'm hearing, you know, this young lady's story um, with her partner. Um, so even that, you know, that, that was. I do remember, um, like, every time that as a director, I saw, like, because I was also playing a character, but I prepared myself to do that. So I was able to separate the actress from the director. And and I was, I kind of re rehearsed the challenge. So I do remember whenever I see an actress kind of trying to push for the moment, I do remember just going and say, remember you got this, surrender. That was kind of the word. It was surrender, it just, just let it go. It's not about acting, just let the character speak to you. And that's exactly like what happened. And um, I have to thank Mirla that she joined us. I, it was another character and I remember we found ourselves into a reading and I said, oh my God, like we find this, like each other from Florida uh, in this place. And I said, why don't you come and join me? And, um, and I let her kind of talk a little about her experience. Un dos. Yes. You got it. <laughs> So yeah, you, Deca and I met in Florida like so long ago, <laughs> oh, maybe five years. <laughs> 20. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then we haven't, uh, we didn't see each other for like so many years. And then casually one day I'm in a reading and then she's directing that reading for another movie. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> then she's, I was like, oh, you remember we met um, in Prometeo, it's a theater we used to go together in Florida. And then she she had the cast already for the movie, but she say I have a project, I have the cast, but then she started thinking, she's like, well, I can have you in the project, but... So I kind of think she added that role for me to be in the project, but I don't know. I, I will say, you no, know, I compile a few characters, and also one of the challenges that I had was like, you don't need to hear a testimony of each woman. Mm -hmm. You know, the silence is powerful. And, and I made choices because I didn't want to feel, oh my God, I didn't want the audience to feel, oh, there you go, another testimony, really, really, really. And also, I didn't want also to feel like, oh, here is the attack um, against men. It's not a film, but it's not that. It's about survivors. Like, they happen to be women because, unfortunately, majority of women are the one going through that. That's the statistics, that's, that's what we know. And also, I have to say that as a um, domestic violence survivor, I wanted to talk about this topic. Mm -hmm. and, and I did. And, and I was able to put myself in every single character, a little piece of the cycle in which I went through. So that's kind of my inspiration. So the character was created already. You just happened, it was supposed to be an Asian, and you just 
came out of them. <laughs> and I happened to have a hijab, and uh, so I said, "Oh, I can play a Islamic person," and I'm very familiar with the culture. Um, so yeah, and when I met everybody, I was like flowing. I was like, I was dreaming because everyone was so like beautifully put together as a cast and the energy. I was like, yeah, I want to be here. It doesn't matter what I do, but I want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so. and, and I have to say something about Mirda's work. Sometimes the character doesn't need to talk a lot. You can feel the pain. And, and I'm really pleased with that because even your character didn't have um, a lot of lines. You have a few. It's just your presence, it, it was filled. It was so much, you could, like every time I put the camera on it, like just, she has a story that she's not ready to tell. And that's what I wanted to, you know, to, uh, to explore with that. I wanted to show that there are ladies out there, that they're not ready to talk. It's okay, you're there, find help, you know? Um, and thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> All of them. All of you, I mean, I'm really pleased with um, each one, with Monica, with the K. <laughs> <laughs> and Barbie here, um, Josephine. So I'm um, really pleased with the work that, that we did. And I have to say that if there is something that um, I want the audience to take home is just identify the different types of, domestic, of, of violence, period. Um, sometimes violence could be as being, you know, rude with someone. And uh, treat people nice. You never know what they're going through. And that's, that's, that's real. You see their faces, you see people sometimes being so happy, and you would never even imagine what they're going through um, behind closed doors. Uh, I could say I was one of those. Uh, you see me in the theater, you see me in every place. It's I was laughing, I was performing. Nobody even imagined. I would never even dare to talk about these things. But whenever I got out of that situation, um, later on, um, wrote a play. After that play, wrote this one and just, have like I'm talking about the topic, but not in the seat of a victim because I am not. I am a survivor, and I'm happy I did it. I understand the mentality. Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you. So I do understand the mentality. What takes? How many takes? It takes a woman to leave. Sometimes they don't. They don't escape, and that's why we're having this conversation because someone that went through that, thankfully recover. Thankfully has the license to talk about these type of topics that are very sensitive and touches, you know, everyone. Oh, um, eh, eh, yo, el español. Yo hablo español. Todo verdad. Okay. Eh, <laughs> como es, estamos acá eh, con este tipo de. Ay, Dios mío, se me olvidó todo. <risa> con este tipo, contando este tipo de historias porque realmente eh, son historias importantes de, de contar y que como sobreviviente eh, pude hablar de este tema y que me siento que tengo la licencia para hacerlo porque eh, me vi en, en, encasillada en, en casi todos, si no todos, el ciclo de lo que es la violencia. <laughs> so I think now, not to make it that long, because I don't think you guys want to hear me the entire night, because I can talk. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for being here, my te, Heidi. Uh, oh my God. Barbie's husband, the kids there, everyone that is in here, like it's intentional. Who's back there? Oh, our director of photography, Hi. Victor, <laughs> and producer as well. Thank you. Welcome, B. Um, so I think I'm gonna open the door, like the floor, f to questions. Um, please. I love the the movie. It's it's amazing. And so my question is, how making the movie or participating in the movie change how you feel? about domestic abuse or, or if it changes or not? Mm. Mm, that's a great question. Um, I, I do think that like being able to, here's one thing, I felt that detachment, I didn't feel I was part of it because I, this is a situation I lived through 
I wrote a play already that I would say that was my catharsis, you know? That I would feel that play was the one that made me really talk like family. So when I was, when I wrote this one, I was ready to talk about the topic, to be here, to, to sit down. Like you remember when um, Senaida mentioned about bringing it to school. So yes, that's the goal, like just to bring it into school. So um, I do feel that I was able to see, uh, identify the pattern that I was that I was into, and and feel it sad for that one me in the past. Oh wow, that's what I was. Because seeing each one of them, they kind of broke each one of these characters, and I and I was like, wow. See, like Monica, that was in denial. I was in that cycle in denial for such a long time. You know, I was not the one who lost the baby, but you know, I was in the cycle of giving me new gift feeling nice about it, you know, and, and someone really checking every single thing I was doing, you know, and feeling trapped. Um, so I, I felt the, the sad about the situation, but also happy in a way of being able to talk about this thing without making it about, oh my God, it's me that I wanted to talk. No, it's like, this is the topic. It's, it's all right, I already survived that. Uh, now let's talk about it, because I do think that going through that, um, it's, it gives me the strength to really be here and talk, you know? So thank you for your question. Yes? Hi. Um, I just want to open this to the full um, panel. Where were you? This, I think this, this was filmed maybe four years ago now. <coughs> Can you take us back to where you were in your lives at the time that um, you actually filmed this film and maybe what you pulled from in your natural life um, to be able to bring the character to life? So for me, so when I filmed this, my husband was on set with my six or eighth month old, I can't remember what he was at, um, at that time, but he was there, he was on set and he was actually crying a lot of the times. I was still breastfeeding. And so when, um, that's what I pulled from, having to think about losing my child to that. So um, there was a lot going on at the time because I was a new mom. My son was in the background, you know, doing his thing and crying. And um, at first I thought that that was a huge distraction for me, but it actually turned out to be a huge motivator and um, something that I was able to pull from to help me to understand more of what, what it would feel like to lose a child. Um, so that's where I was when you know we had filmed Honey. Yeah. Does this work? No. Ah. Um, for me, I, I also did the um, FX makeup in the movie. So I had to do research and I went full deep and I did research of actual pictures of people who suffered uh, domestic violence. And so, and then I had to practice on myself. I practiced on my roommates. <laughs> so that whole aspect already made me dive in deep in a different level, like in a more physical level. And then when I started talking with Udelka about the character, she was explaining how she was more in denial and that she was more of like, kind of like a, a party girl and more like a girl with coming from maybe a rich family. So I immediately went to Paris Hilton. <laughs> and not because I think she's like, ooh, but because she actually went through like six different relationships with men who were very violent and physically abusers towards her and then the years later two years later she comes out with her documentary speaking about how she also was into in, in this uh, school where she was also very physically abused and that blew my mind and I was like wow that makes total sense about why she went into these relationships but that's like something extra so me doing the research with, with her, because luckily I always grew up in an environment where I didn't go through those things. So I really had to do my research and she was like my target. It, it helped me 
like dive into the character and then Udelka really helped me with the rehearsals of how to make her not like the laughing character like we didn't didn't want her to be like the <laughs> yeah the caricature like she's so annoying like it, it's it's different layers and and that was basically my situation and I, I thought that's why the character was so fun because she, it's it's a easy character to judge from the beginning just by the way she walks in and her attitude and everything and then it's like oh no there's more to it so I think that's why it was such a fun part to play. Were you working a lot on the other character? Um, me, I was in Europe, I think, and then I, I came back for. But yeah, I was going through changes, and um, I'm from Cuba, so my culture is very machista, <laughs> and um, maybe not in my household, but I lived um, close to neighbors or so like. Fa other family members that suffer domestic viol violence. And then it's so normal that people always justify that the male does these things. And they, even like these days, I, I feel like when there is like, like a divorce, something as simple as that in a relationship, they always question the female. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, you must have done something wrong for, you know, and you, f you look like, wow, this is, and I was going through a divorce back then. So um, yes, people were questioning me why, and you probably did something wrong. So I, I guess <laughs> I got the inspiration from that. And, <laughs> and um, other, uh, yes, and I, I have, um, I also did research and um, it's very common for human beings and uh, even animals when um, they're going through like a, a lot of pressure or like a lot of fears, the first uh, reaction is to frost, to not do much, to not to talk, not to, mm -hmm. and that was um, what I did with this um, character. <laughs> yes. um, I was in, a, like I was, I felt back in that time, I remember like throughout the drafts, I wanted so bad to tell the story. And I struggled so much. I remember back in those days, I wouldn't sleep, um, just thinking about the characters and, um, and sometimes questioning about, oh, I don't have enough conflict. But then discovering that the conflict was within each one of them. And that was my conflict because I try to measure this film like into the normal arch of a character. What's the conflict, you know? And uh, and I discovered that I have conflict everywhere. <laughs> so um, I was back then in a really like a struggle place. I remember I have videos of me like in front of a camera recording that moment like, oh, it's this time. So I'm working through la la la, a honey cycle. So I really hope to do this. So, you know, I do have those recordings and I, you know, sometimes I look back and I'm like, wow. So I was, you know, really like, it was tough back then. Like now, yeah, it's tough in other, in other places, like maybe um, developing other works. But back then it was really, it was hard to give birth like a story that was not boring. Even it's a quiet topic of women sitting down and I knew I was up to the challenge. I knew, but that was that was exactly, you know, I'm like it is what it is. This is the story and I wanted to be that. So back then, but it's still, you know, four years later, right? 2019. What is that, five? Five years later, you know, I'm really content. Yeah, so five years later, I'm really content that um, I got the courage to work through, you know, like difficult nights. And um, oh, I have to really mention, I don't know, like is the DP here? He left? Oh, he walked out. Sorry guys, it's not important. So I was gonna um, bring him in into a conversation. Um, about the different drafts, but um, but I have to say that I'm happy that I really show up for myself, and, and that I did it, and, and I'm happy that four years later we can talk about this topic. Yes? Hi, my name is Marte, and I just want to say congratulations to you, Judeca. Thank you. It's a beautiful film that 
that has a lot of power. And I'm really um, grateful that you did this film because we have youth, adolescents here, teenagers tonight, that um, it serves a great example that violence is not something that, well, where I saw it from, that it's not uh, a niche, like it doesn't have an in, um, uh, mm -hmm. it comes from an early age, which was like you were talking about when your, your child was there and, and from the womb and all the beautiful stuff that you wrote. And, and we have here a group of what, 14 years, adolescents? Yes. That, um, that it, it's a message. Mm -hmm. for, for young people to understand that violence is just not something that is proper to do. So I, I hope this film does, you know, go beyond, you know, the generation that we're that, that is present today, but that does exceed other generations to understand that um, that violence is just unacceptable, and it doesn't have not to do with gender. It has to do with unacceptable behavior. And I wanted to say that it's a beautiful film that is to be broadcast to all generations because violence is just not acceptable. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Victor, um, I was like, can you come here so people can see you and say something about your process? Go <laughs> English, huh? Wow. Just Spanish. Okay, go ahead. Hi, people. <laughs> en nada, el proceso del film, quería hacerlo con una iluminación tenue y bajita, y solamente usé un bombillo. One ball light. Just, I, I use one ball light. Eh, fue una, una, un bombillo de eso que uno utiliza en la casa, en the house. So, con esa iluminación, pusimos una bola en el medio y pusimos esta hermosa 10 chicas alrededor y pusimos un, la bola en el medio y ahí construimos una iluminación tenue para, para que se viera así como dramático, que tuviera ese, ese ambiente. La locación no ayudaba un poco porque yo la quería así como negra, pero imagínense aquí, buscar locación aquí en Nueva York es un problema. Y, y tapamos con mucha cortina negra lo que pudimos. Pero sí, los lo compañeros míos, los ayudantes míos, estaban muy emocionados con el film. O sea, creían que eran de verdad mujeres que, que habían pasado por eso. O sea, las actrices, las otras actrices. Ay, disculpa, que estoy hablando mal. Sí. Yo que estaba hablando sin el micrófono. Pero me escucharon, ¿verdad? No, I, I'm bilingual right now. <laughs> I, I, I'm doing both. I understand what he said. No, no, you see? Yes. Next time, let me know about it. For the movie, for the, because, for the film, for the movie, because I took my, my Spanish for pizza. Okay. I was dying. Let me know about it. I'm part of the film. Okay. I wanted to say that one of the things that I remember um, talking with Victor was about medium shots. They were important. It was not about seeing the whole um, general of the room. It was all about in their faces. It was that was also something that we worked into. It's like reason why we don't have like a whole you know body shots is because it was intentional. So um, that was also on purpose. Yes. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I really want to congratulate you on this work. Uh, I lived all of those stories through 10 years of working with domestic violence survivors mm -hmm. and you captured it absolutely accurately. The stories the the denial the rage the body language it was like the it was like putting a fly on the wall in our sessions so i really really want to like honor you and congratulate you for that uh, and one thing that
that I want to ask you regarding the title. Can you tell us about what this, why did you choose Hope Honey Cycle? Does it have to do with... Yes, it does. It has to. You got it. You got it. Yes, it has to be. Thank you so much. Um, yes, it has to be uh, the cycle right. of domestic violence. I, each one of the characters, represent a stage of denial. So, uh, I, in one of my rewrites, I was like, "It's honey," but it's you know how is the circle of honeymoon. It's honey cycle. So I didn't want to go obvious into the you know honeymoon cycle, but I was definitely exploring each one of the cycles of domestic violence. That's why we have Monica um, in denial. So she was representing that stage in in which domestic violence uh, you know victim is in denial. Um, Mirla was representing that one that doesn't want to say a lot, but because of the choices of the words that she chooses to talk about, you know that there's more to that. And, but she's, you know, the other one, Martha, was um, representing that one, I don't wanna say my things in, in public, but can we take it to the inside? But you could see that she's also going through a lot at home. So um, it's same thing with uh, Barbie Lee's character, Josephine, that is like, she's just fed up. This is maybe her second time coming into this place and she's just, just she just into that stage of she wants to talk about um, you know and then we have the other one that um, what was her name the Italian one Ro Rose Rose Rose, Rose um, and Rose is into that rage thing that is like I kill you like I I got so much pain like police is not helping me restraining orders is not working for me you know um, I put on a restraining order and the guy still beat me up and cleans the floor you know with my head so each one of those characters were thought on purpose and and that was kind of the work that I did into representing the cycle wi within each one of the characters thank you so much for picking on that and she asking about uh, the credit too mm -hmm. oh yes on the credits too no, oh so yes how we do the credits. Uh, well the credits uh, we went to where we went like somewhere upstate in New York some far place upstate New York to find the the, the comb the, the honeycomb. Honeycomb. Oh my God. And yeah, I, like I have to hours. say, I have to say, bye. Thank you, bye. Um, I have to say also that um, that woman, that she works like the one that has the all the honey uh, installation thing at uh, home. She she had a like institution that works with domestic violence, uh, like women. And for me, that was like, oh wow, I'm getting my credits and working with that, like with someone that is, you know, that she she's like with the cost, like directly. So um, we talked about uh, bringing it into the institution, and you know, and we'll help at some point, you know. But we talked about that. But it comes from that. And and also the name of the character, you know how in the honey, uh, in, like in the honey hole um, bee thing, like Reina is, you know, is, is a, that's why the name also. Yeah, so it was the whole going into like symbolism behind, definitely. Thank you so much for picking on that. Any other questions? Yeah, um, I'm gonna ask him in Spanish, that's okay. okay. Si, por favor. Um, yo también soy sobreviviente y me pareció increíble el, um, el film, pero en específicamente la parte de ella, de Barbie. porque es como el silencio, uh -huh. porque eh, sobre todo eh, que pasa mucho detrás de los hogares perfectamente religiosos y entonces cuando la vi con esa con esa con esa uh, vestido y ese silencio me, me impactó porque creo que sin necesidad solamente con esa palabra de decir es que no tengo dónde ir uh -huh. so you guys know what she's talking about is that she's a survivor and the character that um, really shocked her the most was um, the character that Mirla with the silent and the little lines that she would say, I don't have a place to go, um, that was kind of a powerful, that you can see that she's going through a lot. So gracias, gracias por, por, 
por, uh, por venir y por compartir que, que es sobreviviente. Y bueno, eh, gracias por estar aquí, de verdad que sí, de corazón a corazón. <risa> Thank you so much for being here. Um, it is it is a blessing to to share um, this beautiful moment with Thank each you. one of you. Thank <laughs> you for being here. Wow. You're so stupid. Look at you. you. Cannot think by your own. I guess he can't drink. I never understood why he did that. We have to let the scars heal. God, have you ever been abused? Do you understand the pain that a woman who's been abused goes through? 